What a good guys, so I'm here with Zomok vs Black Ovalier and this is a game that happened the other day and I was only had 3 hours sleep so I kind of messed up the narration so I'm going to redo this real quick um, just so you guys know if I hover over a monitor don't talk about that mod in the narration it's because yeah it's an old recording and I'm narrating over it uh, just looking at the teams real quick it's probably going to be uh, Z-Move, uh, Gyarados on Zomok's side Megalady with maybe Bolt Beam and Defog. It could also be Defog on Lando. The Lando should be Scarf on Zomok's side. The other potential Scarf would be the Heatran, but Scarf Lando makes more sense. And then on Black Ops side, it's going to be a Mega Morway squad. It has to be Scarf Kelio because this um, Battle Bond Greninja matchup is pretty bad. Otherwise, Kelio can at least um, switch in and then force the Greninja out. Like, it can only switch in once or twice, but at least it's a check. The Magnezone could be either Scarf or Assault Vest. Scarf would help with the Kartana matchup, Assault Vest would help with like Lily matchup. So I'm not sure about that yet. And then he has a few options, which is his Rocker, um, Mobile or Landris, I would assume. And yeah, the Ladi could could be Z-Move, I'm not sure about that yet. So we see Ladi versus Ladi lead. Zomok has to switch out here into either Heatran or Ferrothorn because um, Mega Latias usually doesn't carry Dragon Step, and obviously the Latios is going to have Dragon Step on Black Oblivion's side. So I think Black Oblivion should double here. Um, he can either double into Magnuson or into Landris. Magnuson, you would go to that if you're really confident that Zomok goes to his Ferrothorn. Uh, but Landris, I think, is a better mid ground play because Landris covers Zomok uh, going into Heatran. And if Zomok goes into Ferrothorn, you can then U turn out with your Landris. If the Ferro stays in, you can then trap it with the Magnuson. And I really kind of like. The offensive core that Black Ovalian has going on with Morwell, Ferrothorn and Ladi. Because um, Ferro is going to obviously trap um, Ferrothorn and Scythor for Morwell. So Morwell is not going to have a fire move. Ladi is also not going to have HP fire. That core is annoyed by Heatran. So I would guess that either the Morwell has Focus Punch or the Ladi has um, Z Hydro Vortex or something like that. So we're going to see later in the game. So he does go on a Ferrothorn. Bio makes that double into Lando that I was talking about, covers the trend, and if he goes Ferro, then you can just U-turn out into your Magnus Zone, and if the Ferro stays in, you can then trap it. So I really like what he has going on there. He has some some U-turn action, some Volt Switch action, and he has uh, like an offensive core. Um, so yeah, he's going to HP Fire here. It's going to do like... 50 to 60 percent it's gonna tweet ko someone can either knock off an item here or go for leech sheet unless he has uh, spikes as well on his ferrothorn double hazard ferro is not that common but could be a thing like it is a thing sometimes now uh after he removes the ferrothorn that is definitely nice for his Ladi. Because Ladi only has to worry about heat twin, and i would like i said earlier Im imagine that Ladi could have hydro vortex or something to heat Heatran. So he does get rid of that as uh, Zomok was able to get up a spike. Now Zomok is probably gonna go Heatran. Black Ovalian does not have a good Heatran switch in, especially with hazards up. Kelly would take a lot from Rock Spikes, Madman Storm, and secondary effect from Madman Storm. Um, so, yeah, like, Heatran has to, should come out here, and then Zomok has to go into either Kelly or Ladi. Depending on if he has a move on Ladi to hit the Heatran, even if he doesn't have a move on Ladi to hit the Tran, he could bluff that, so Zomok has always has to scout for that. But like, I'm thinking, like either the Mew, the Lando, or the Ladi, one of the three has to be the Z-Move user, and Hydro Vortex would make sense to me for stuff like um, Heatran. Also has with the T-Tar matchup a bit. If he does go Ladi, he can eat up the Madness Storm, and... Um, this is what I'm talking about, like Zomok should definitely switch out here and scout. He should probably go into his Pex or his Ladi to scout for um, something like Z-Surf or something like Earthquake, even though Earthquake is not really common on regular Ladi. Um, if I'm Bio and I have Roost, I could, he could go for Roost. He could also go for Defog if he has that. Um, yeah, all those plays are options for sure. But yeah, Zomok should never stay in here because Zom Black Oblivion brought the Ladi in on the Heatran, which is literally screaming, hey, I have a Ladios that can hit you, Heatran. So he does go on the Ladi scouting for Z Surf. Uh, that also covered Earthquake, so that works out fine. As it does have Earthquake. Now, the thing is, I don't think this Ladi is Scarf because the Kaldio has to be Scarf, and the Zone, there's a chance the Zone is Scarf as well, but there's no way it's going to be Triple Scarf. So Zomok now has to switch out again, in my opinion, into Pax. Or Heatran to scout for um, the Ladi not being choiced, and because Black Oliving can go for Draco here if he's not choiced. So, like, I don't think Zoma can afford to stay in. Um, if Black Oliving does not have a move to hit this Ladi, then he's probably gonna switch into either his um, Mawile or Magnezone. 
Yeah, I would assume that that is his play if he does not have a move to hit this. But I'm pretty sure this is not choice lie and it has a move to hit. Zomax Lari, so Zomax has to switch out. Again, if he has Defog, this is another chance to go for it, but I don't think he has it. I think he could have gone for it last turn if he had it. So Zomak stayed in, which I don't agree with that play, and he, he just loses his Ladi to Draco. Oof, we do see it's Life Orb Ladi. Life Orb off Quick Ladi. So I assume the last move is either Psy Shock, Psychic, and Recover. Um, so I'm guessing that the default guy is either the Lando or the Mew. Really interesting. Then that's some fire synergy. He has Ladi with Earthquake for Heatran and Ladi obviously can't hit Scissor on Feral, but Zone gets rid of those for Ladi. And yeah, now the Lando is probably Scarf and Zoma can uh, go to that and U-turn out. His other potential play would have been going to Gyarados and setting up. Um, Z-Move Gyarados definitely can put in some work, but Bio has ways around that. I assume he has Intimidate on Mawal, he has Intimidate on Lando, so he can Intimidate, Shuffle and check Gyarados pretty well. Mawal either has knockoff or um, T punch to hit the the Gera as well. So he does go zone anticipating the U-turn. Um, obviously U-turn was always the play there, not only because it hits the Ladi super effective, because also if BO goes to his defoggers, you wanna prevent him from defogging if you're Zomok if you can. And now he's just gonna Magnus Storm again. BO is either gonna go Keldia or he's gonna go Ladi. I think Ladi would die after rocks uh, if Magnus Storm connects. Uh, from the secondary effect from Magnus Storm. He doesn't want to stay in here with Magnus Zone. Um, if he's Choice Scarf, he can Volt Switch out here. And if he's a Soul Vest, he obviously has to Hard Switch out. Like I said, Ch Choice Scarf Zone would help him with the Katana matchup. AV would help more checking um, stuff like Ninja Because Kaldi alone is a little... It's not the best Ninja answer. Can only switch in like once or twice. So yeah, depending on if he's AV or Scarf, it's either the play is either Hard Switch out or Volt Switch if you're Scarf. And yeah, Zomax play here is always Magma Storm. Yeah, like if Bio is in a pretty fine position, I think uh, he can easily defog the hazards away later, and he's like two months ahead. He might like he might have he might have second slider here or like this Kelly get weakened, but that's completely fine. Like I would imagine his mobile is either SD knockoff or SD Thunder Punch, so he can easily beat the packs. So like Keldio being walled by packs doesn't even matter much in this game. So he just walled out here, confirming that he's Choice Scarf. And he does uh, go Lari. La the Magma connects, so Lari's gonna go down here. And now he can go into his um, Lando or Keldio. So he goes Landris. If he has default now, he can go for that. If he doesn't, he can just um, go for U-turn here. But I assume he has default, just the way this has been played. The Zoma can go into his Gyarados here. Yeah, he's definitely gonna go Gyarados. He's not gonna stay in and risk his trend. Yeah, so like, like I said, either you turn here to get momentum, or you defog if you have that. Um, so the Ladi was live, or which means either the Land or the Mew has to be the Z move user on Black Oblivion's side, because the Kaldio has to be Scarf, and his own was also Scarf, and the uh, Marvel obviously has the Mega Stone as an item. I mean, it could still have, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say Defog could have also been on the Ladi, but I'm pretty sure he would have gone for Defog earlier if he had it on Ladi. So it has to be Defog Mew or Defog Lando. And also one of the two has to be the Z-Move user. So let's go into Gyarados here as we do see Defog Landorus. Now, Zomok is either gonna Dragon Dance, Waterfall or Sub. Those are his three options here, depending on his set. Um, sometimes Gyarados runs Taunt, Dragon Dance, Z bounce and waterfall. Sometimes it does run sub. This one runs sub. So back on I mean, the U turns out. Now we can just go into Scarf Magnus Zone. Volt switch to break the sub. And then you can go to Mawile or Landris to get an intimidate off. Most likely Mawile. Yeah, so Scarf Zone is pretty nice here because. Like he could just act accordingly to what Zomok did. If Zomok did not have sub, then he could have just gone hard mobile to intimidate. But if he had sub, then he can just go into Scarf Zone, Volt Switch, break the sub, and then intimidate him. So that's pretty cool. And yeah, I assume this mobile has knockoff or T-Punch, which is gonna be able to break the sub most likely. Gyarados, unless he does Earthquake, but it's not gonna be able to do much damage to the mobile, and that does absolutely nothing, no flinch either. So um, Zomok is forced out here into his Heatran or Landris. So Black Oblivion couldn't predict that, and 
he could either go for rocks if he has that, or he could double out into something that covers um, Heatran Orlando, which would have been a double into Kaleo. But since he had rocks, it's also a completely fine play. Now, since there's no more hazards on Bio's side, Kaleo is a pretty much will not take that much damage from Magma Storm. Uh, so Kaleo is just gonna scald here. So has Protect, which is a cool tech. Um, this will get some extra chip damage on the Kaleo with a secondary effect from Magma Storm and also some leftovers back. And obviously Kaleo cannot double out because it's trapped in from Magma Storm. And yeah, he does just try to burn the, the packs there. I mean, he was forced to skull, because like I said, he was locked in. So he does go land, or I assume we're going to see a T-Spike or Toxic come out. Yep. Now, Black Oven is forced to Earthquake here. Uh, the thing is, Pax is a stupid mon, so Pax can eat this up, even if it's spit death, because this is probably... A is it defensive land that we will see from the damage from Earthquake? I mean, it had... Yeah, I'm thinking this is, might be a Helmet Lando. Also, NJMP made a team kind of like this. I think it had Mimikyu over Ladi. I don't remember. Maybe it was over Kaldio. There was like one or two months different. But that team also had Rocks Marvel and it had Knock Off Lando plus Magnus Zone to get rid of the Shed Shell versus Stall to help with the Stall matchup. That team was interesting for sure. And it also had Rocks Marvel. Uh, I already said that. I said that twice. My bad. But yeah, now Zomok has to switch out because he needs this, otherwise he loses to Keldeo because his Gyarados is super low after rocks. So he's forced to switch here into either his own land or to his Gyarados. So if Black Oblivion wants, he can U-turn here, but I don't think it matters what Black Oblivion does. Black Oblivion is pretty far ahead and I think he has this game wrapped up. Um, yeah, if he really wants to, he can U-turn here because Zomak is never going to stay in, but he can also Earthquake. Like, U-turn I guess is technically the play because you don't want to give the Gyarados any setup opportunity and if you U-turn on the incoming Gyarados, then you can just, um, yeah, you can act accordingly. You can either go to Marwal or you can go to um, Kaldio if that would kill. Because even if Zomok then saves the Gyarados and switches into packs, the Gyarados then dies to rocks anyway. Unless he gets a defog off with his, which is la with his Lando. But I don't think it matters at all what he does. I'm just like talking about some scenarios here. So he does U-turn, gets the play correct, and... Yeah, I mean, he could go Mawile, Magnezone. Actually, no, Magnezone not, because Magnezone would need prediction. So Magnezone's not the play. Mawile, Keldeo, or Mew are the options here. Mew is only an option if it's uh, speedy Mew, obviously. Which I'm thinking at this point, it should probably be Zemo of Mew. And the Lando's probably Helmet. Uh, U-turn, Defog, Earthquake, HP, Ice. And the, because the Mawile had rocks. And then the Mew would just make sense to be Psychic, Nasty Plot, Munium Z. Uh, with either Focus Blast or Aura Sphere. And maybe Rock Polish. Um, rock Polish or another coverage move. I mean, another coverage move you would run on Mew would be Fire Blast. I assume it has Rock Polish over another coverage move because he has already Magnus Zone. So he doesn't need Fire Blast because Magnus Zone already traps Ferrothorn and uh, Scissor. Mainly Scissor. Fire Blast is mainly for Scissor because Ferrothorn would still die, uh, take a lot from like fighting moves like Aura Sphere or Focus Blast. So he is that speedy Mew set. He just, just killed the Gyarados with Psychic. Now, he's probably going to go back into his Keldeo here. Um, because even if he has a fighting move, the Heatran is still pretty healthy and might be able to beat the Mew one-on-one. -on -one because Magma Storm should do around half or maybe even a bit more. Like, Magma Storm should tweet KO the Mew for sure. Uh, I don't remember how healthy the Keldeo is. If the Keldeo is not that healthy, he can sack the Lando here if he wants to. I don't think it matters what he does. He can sack something or he can go hard to Keldeo, depending on how healthy it was. I think a Keldeo was at like half, a little bit more than half. Yeah, I mean, the reason why Black Oblivion would want to keep his Lando is um, so Zomox Lando can spam Earthquake. So maybe um, maybe Magnuson is the better sack because um, if you keep Lando, that means the opposing Scarf Lando cannot spam Earthquake. But honestly, don't think it matters too much what he does. Like, he's pretty far ahead. Like, at this point, you would have to mess up a lot to lose this game if you're B.O. In a pretty fine position. But yeah, Magma Storm is obviously gonna come out here. And we saw that the Pharaoh's almost double hazard, so this T-Turn doesn't have hazards. Oh Bio is gonna time out, don't do this. So yeah, it just goes hard Keldeo. Um I think the Keldeo dies now actually. That's that's why I thought he might maybe hard Keldeo wasn't the play, because now he can go for protect and Keldeo dies. But um hmm, let me think real quick. So maybe Maybe staying in with Mew would have been a better play then, if, you, if you're if you just gonna stack the Kaleo anyway. 
Because this Landros is super low, and if his Landros does not speed the Tyrann... Yeah, then he just goes back to Mew. So I guess he kind of messed up there, but it doesn't matter too much. I mean, it depends if he's Auras Fios Focus Blast. Because if he's Focus Blast, they can miss, and then can, the end can still... They can be bad for him. Yeah, like I don't think Hard Kelly was the play. Um, but it's fine, it's fine. Um, so we, I'm expecting either a Nasty Plot here or, uh, or, or a Fighting Move. As he does dodge a Madness Storm. Yeah, that would have done like... I would assume 55%. That's a head calc. It definitely would not have... Um, like, definitely would not have all code. So he does a Focus Blast, he hits it, and the Heatran just dies. And yeah, obviously now the Mew just wins the game because... Nando cannot Oko the Mew. He just clicks Psychic twice. Uh, he clicks Psychic once and then Psychic UMZ if he wants to. Okay, he doesn't just win because Pax is gonna get sacked off, Lando can come back in, and then Lando can revenge the Mew. Um, no, it cannot because there's the Rock Polish. Okay, I forgot about that. So it does have, like I said earlier, there's... Since he doesn't have to run Fire Move, since he has Magizuna Traps Scizor, so his Mew doesn't have to worry about that. He can't afford to run Rock Polish. I don't know why I forgot about that. Rock Polish was the best play there. Because if he Earthquakes, he doesn't Oko you. If he U-turns to Tweet KO you, then you come back in. But it didn't matter at all. Because even if he... Uh, a nice, nice, nice Genesis Supernova to end off the game. But even if he didn't Rock Polish there, he would have killed um, the Toxapex. And then if the Lander comes back in... It would have to lock. It cannot lock into a move that kills everything. If it locks into Earthquake, the opposing Lando comes out. And also, um, Morwell can go for Sucker Punch. Because Lando is in the air, which means. Actually, no, no. If the Mew would have died, the terrain would not have been up. But you guys get what I'm trying to say, right? This game was unlosable at that point. The, ga yeah, the game was unlosable at that point. I had to pause for a second. I messed up. But yeah, this is um, the standing here. We have um, the Tyrants are up. They were up 6 and 3, and now it's 4 and 6 after Black Oblivion's win. And yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed. Uh, pretty well played by Black Oblivion. I especially like the team, it's pretty cool. I don't think the, the Keldeo was necessary to be sacked off, but he played pretty fire otherwise. And yeah, I will see you guys with more coverage. Um, other games that I have upcoming are like Extra vs. Jinji. And um, I think I also recorded yeah, Snow vs. Oblivion that's going to be coming. Have a fantastic day. Smash that like button if you enjoy. And peace out.